You are watching the biggest and the largest African spiritual platform. We are the highest. We are the greatest. We are the biggest. We are African liberation. I welcome you to another great episode. My name is always Queen Hadasha. I'm Labraska. I am the sun goddess. I welcome you, Ebusunya. And then so yeah, the Fufro, and uh, I think it's going to be great. I can feel that in my system. Uh, but the answer said they are a beko. Send a day the kind of platform you saw and walk consciousness family. We believe in Africa. We believe so much that we will be great again. I welcome you. Let's welcome our guest. He's Mr. Xavier Kwame Dogbe. Papa Yamuakwaba. Hey, we welcome you. Do you speak to him? No, please. Uh, please greet the public. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sylvia Kwame Dugbe, a level 400 student of University of Education, Winneba, reading political science education and have history minor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a native of Vota, Akachi Ajikama, to be precise. So that is my identity. Yo, we welcome you. Thank you. And the school, Winneba, I have to come there. Uh, sure. Yeah, mm. sure. <laughs> it's it's um, Mr. Way, my friend. I have a friend there who is standing for election. Do you know him? Solomon. Solomon. The Pan African. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. I will come and visit. <laughs> I will come and visit you. I welcome okay. you. Thank we you appreciate your presence you on much. the platform. So uh, you are coming to talk about African culture and values, yes. but as usual, we do our random questions mm. before we get into the main topic sure. so um what do you believe in as african or as a person as a person i believe in positivity i believe that in one way or the other we humans are connected to a supernatural being and that supernatural being uh, inculcate in us or direct us as to how to live a moral life to affect changes in our society in which we live with other colleague human beings. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what you believe exactly. in. Okay, so you are a student yes, learning please. about Africa. Or uh, what? What are you learning? I'm reading political science education. Okay, so yes. you are here to talk about African culture and values as what? As a pastor, as what? I want to know so I know where to channel my questions. Oh, okay. Uh, I am an African child. Mm-hmm. So you yes, are coming and I to, believe in culture. So you are coming to teach us based on you being an African child. Exactly. Okay, so you looking at Africa, since you believe you are an African child, I am happy that <laughs> a child is owing us for your African child. That's a great <laughs> uh, that's a great statement. Oh, I yes. love that. Oh yes. So um looking at Africa at your age mm. and in your study, mm. what have you seen? about Africa that makes you hold on to it? That is a great question and I really love that. As I'm coming of age, I realize that Africa, we have a rich culture. Africa, we are rich in terms of resources, both capital and natural with human resources. We have the technical know-how there. I believe that Africa, we have a common belief or practice that unites us or that identifies us among other continents. Yes. And that is, you are that. That is our system of belief. Which is? That is the African spirituality or African traditional religion and culture. Okay, so you believing in Africa looking at when you were like 18 years mm. and now looking at africa is it reducing how is the percentage of the hope we have that africa will be great again <laughs> uh, i believe that africa looking at africa in the past uh, what's the school of thoughts i came across in my study and looking at the persistent key changes that are coming in place. I think Africa, we have lost great things in the past, but I'm still believing that 
gradually uh, that transformation will come and then we'll realize our true identity as Africans. Looking at us right now, how much percentage do you think in 100 years, in 50 years, looking at your own observations, mm. you know, how many years now you fight harder, we will get there? <laughs> uh, that will be very difficult to mention though. But I would have to speculate mm -hmm. around the range of years. Maybe mm -hmm. from uh, 20 to 40 years to come, we will begin to have that kind of transformation. So what do you change. think will make that happen? That is when we begin to believe and educate ourselves as, as African. That is when we begin to make others realize that we have... Uh, 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 an identity to protect. We have a culture to protect and build on. We need to make ourselves outstanding as a continent that other uh, a, a, a group of people always look down upon. Yes. What is African identity? What will make someone an African? What will make someone an Africa? That is a brilliant question. First of all, I believe in territory. So our territory identifies us as an African. We finding ourselves within the continent of Africa by birth makes us Africans. Moreover, our culture, in terms of culture, our language, our belief system, what we wear, what we eat, identifies us as African. Okay. Yes. I was going to ask that the blacks that are born outside our domain, <laughs> what are they? Oh, they are Africans. So they if you Africans. tell me that the, what, that's what makes an African, uh, how do you want me to believe that they are born outside the, our domain and they are still Africans? Can you clarify this? They part? have their origin from Africa. Okay. So yes. the ancestral line defines exactly. uh, Obi as an exactly. African. When you were talking, you said African spirituality. Mm. When they say African spirituality, what do you mean? I believe the way Africans communicate with their supernatural beings. How do Africans communicate with their supernatural beings? That is good. We Africans um, as an African child who has grown up and have seen some few things or have experienced some few practices. Uh, I realize that Africans communicate with the supernatural being that some people call God, that some people call Mauga Sobolisa, through different ways or in different ways. Yes. And these, some of these different ways is Africans communicate with this supernatural being through divinities, through lesser gods, through uh, 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 objects or things they believe that when they call the supernatural god uh, being true, will respond to them or will protect them. Yes. So what are those those small gods you are talking about? What are those? Is it the 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 wooden things and stuff? I explain for us to understand. Oh good. When we talk about divinities that Africans worship the supernatural being true, we are referring to uh let me say, objects that serve as mediators through which humans communicate with the spiritual being. So sometimes when you go to some traditional areas or some local areas in Africa, you will see some kind of, let me say, objects being in the form of a stone, wooden, uh, form or whatever that they perform 
or they practice their activities through. So these are the things that Africans use to communicate to the Spanish. Is it what we, we call a bosom? Yes, is that uh, what uh, we call uh, with the divinity, that is the divinities where with the Yorubas in the Nigeria they call the uh, the Oris, the Orison, mm -hmm. and then the Airways Voodoo and uh, the Akans, Obosum or Abusum. Mm -hmm. Yes, are yeah, so these are the means through which Africans communicate with the supernatural being. Okay, so let me take you a little back. Before mm. they were communicating with this divinity, as you call it, and things were happening. Mm. Um, I'm a very old woman, so I've seen a lot of things. Sure, sure. I'm asking, do you think all these divinities are still in Ghana? If yes, what signs, what are the evidences that prove that these divinities are still here? Mm. If no, why are they not here? What has taken them away from us? Mm. Uh, I will say that in Ghana here, the divinities are not totally out. There are still some. What is the evidence? The evidence is this, that we those or uh, the group of people mm, that still communicate with that supernatural being through the former ways still hold on to these principles guiding it. But when we begin to believe in other ways of worship, that is where we begin to lose the presence of the divinities in Ghana. So I will say that with the current changes happening, that is making people divert their beliefs to other modes of worship, worshiping that supernatural being. Then you that say that people Af will not understand. So break down. Because we're diverting to here, maybe mm. uh, to Shintoism and we are maybe, I mean, something. So we know what we are talking about. Good. So uh, specifically, when Africans begin to divert their belief or their ways of worship to become Christians or to Christianity, you see that that the the unity or the that larger group of people who believe in that way of worshiping the supernatural being there will definitely be a reduction and as it goes there are some practices that those group of people who have changed their ways of worship will no longer involve themselves into and it will come with its own implications and then other things in terms of moral lives in our environment. Yes. What implications? When I talk of implications, I'm referring to how Africans hold on to truths, how faithful they are. And then maybe with regards to the association they have with that supernatural being through their modes of worship might not be the same as they convert or they begin to become Christians or divert to other religions. In this way that maybe if I know that I do something wrong and I have to testify that I do it. And I know if I lie before my priest, I will die. I will have to, what I have to do is just to see the truth. But if I begin to change my way of worship 
of which we see it to be very merciful, very protective, that even when you go against the rules of humanity, you will still be safe. Then there will definitely be a negative change in our behavior. Because if I have changed my way from, uh, 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 let me say, the traditional African traditional worshiper into Christianity, and I realize that I can, there are certain things that I do and go free without having the instant justice. If I do it today and I didn't receive any kind of punishment, the next day I'm going to do it. And you, it will continue like that. So it will become part and parcel of you. That is why nowadays people are finding it difficult to stand for truth. So, but let's break this thing down. Okay. Looking at our way of worship, mm. our tribal wars, and all that, and looking at all these things, mm. what do you think really pushed people from our traditional belief to this thing, to Christianity and the Akekano? Mm. What exactly, uh, 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 triggers at the end? I, I think that when we talk about culture, there are, it's, it's, it is different from ethnic groups to ethnic groups. Maybe my way of life in my community or in my ethnic group might be different from yours. And what I regard in my ethnic group to be a sin will not be regarded as a sin in your ethnic group based on how that traditional setup is brought up. So, if we have a system of belief or practice that is humiliating and people think they would have to seek for comfort or people are educated in a particular way to believe that when you move to this place, you are more protected and you are more guided, then people will start to move from their former way of worship to this new way of worship they have been educated on. So to you, no for say education, no, nah, it's in GM. Yes. That's, that's how you feel? Yes. Okay, so uh, looking at people, those who shifted to this place, be honest, and those who are still there, who are those losing and who are those winning in terms of spirituality? In terms of spirituality, who are those winning and who are those losing? Okay, this is uh, a very technical question. If I am a Christian, and then in terms of spirituality, I have my satisfaction, my fulfillment, I have that cordial relation with my supernatural being, it will be known to me alone. And if I'm a traditionalist, or I'm a member of the tradi African traditional religion, the communication that exists between me and my supernatural being determines the satisfaction I have or the protection I have. So this level of spirituality would depend on these individuals who find themselves in different religions. Okay, so if that is the case, uh, why should we have a problem that that is what making giving us freedom? That's why making us uh, putting us people to become untrue. Good. How uh, if that is the case? Good. When we follow the African culture, there are certain things that you cannot do as a child or as a member of a particular community. But when we take a critical look at uh, communities of today or our current environment, we will see different kind of changes that some people termed civilization. With the 
African traditional religion or the African cultural practices, there are some code of dress codes that you cannot use outside. Why? Because as, let me say for instance, as a woman, there are some dresses you can put up and go out there. Or there are some appearance that you need not to possess outside. You have to protect that pride as a woman. And in the African culture, they inculcate the spirit of truth, faithfulness, humility, respect for authorities, respect for elders in, in, their, in their generation. But what do we see today? There is a great transformation or a great change that is affecting us one way or the other. When we begin to immerse ourselves in this current civilization that we call, and you go out there to the streets, what do we see about our African ladies? As compared to the past, where women in their pride are trained, are raised in the house by their parents, to become that useful being to the environment. Oh yes. I, and and I am not I am not being biased because from this I'm coming to move to the the males. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because we also have so many things to worship. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good. So when you look at our streets now, do we still have that prestige, that preciousness, Amana. that pride in our ladies. Okay. So, so, in this kind of civilization that we are practicing blindly, is bringing or is uh, uh, having a negative impact on society. Coming to that of we the guys, Gone are the days where you see our fathers bringing us close to themselves, training us with their local skills they have acquired from their parents as well, giving us this informal education where as you are growing, you have a handiwork. You are being trained from a house to, be, to become a useful man in society, a man who can take care of a family, who can take care of the wife and children in the future. But today, what do we see in some of the African guys that we have nowadays? We no longer believe in that philosophy of hard work. We no longer believe in that moral lifestyle. There are activities that we engage ourselves in that is now bringing negative impact on the society. And some of this is where African guys try to make money today for today's benefit without looking into the future to know how what they are making today will sustain them in the future. It's because of religion or more Akoshimi. <laughs> I'm not saying specifically religion, but the current civilization we have and then the diversity we have from our culture. Uh, because we are talking about spirituality, African spirituality. That's why I centered it there. We, with, the, with, the spiritual, with the spirituality that I'm talking about, it also has its own moral lifestyle on our spiritual life. Apart from that, how has that modified us physically? to be useful people in the society. So sometimes we will say that there can be positive changes mm, from the civilization we have. But 
these are some of the negative aspects to or impact is having on society. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Yo, you are watching the biggest and the largest. Um, um, the topic, you know, your African culture and values. The topic, no, no, no. They are here, any day. They are just randoms. I welcome you once again to the biggest and the largest African spiritual platform. Okay, in Tino, when they say Africa culture and values are, your patres and Tobuna take us through. Okay. When we talk about African culture, we are looking at our way of life, how we live as Africans, our language, our belief, our moral lifestyle, what we do. That is the cultural aspect. And when we are talking about values, we are talking about the degree of quality in the activities that are useful to us. What we engage in, our behaviors, our attitudes, set of attitudes that we possess or we put up to make our society grow. So when we are talking about African culture and values, these are the things we are looking at. Yes. These are the things we are looking at. So mm. if someone is watching us right now, yeah. Now can you pick all the uh your friend is saying uh, tribes no no waki kim and I say Uber Center wa won't kwa we and now waki can we just want to know. Okay, good. Uh, <coughs> if I will deal with these accounts and then the Evis, okay. Mm. When we take the accounts, for instance, there are specific things that identifies them. First is their language, okay. Their language. After their language, what else? What they eat? The kind of food they eat. The clothes they wear. And how they wear them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So they are dance, they, okay? They are dance and all that. Group them or identifies them as a, a tribe. Somebody will ask, uh, what is their food? What is their dance? At least you mentioned okay, a few. Okay, okay, good. Uh, let me say with the uh, Akans, okay? Uh, I will say that Uh, they have this identity with their clothes, okay? We can say that the Ashanti Kete is associated with their accounts, mm -hmm. okay? When we come to their dance, uh, is it uh, Adua or I don't know? Adua? <laughs> yes, their dance. With their language, we have the tree, the Ashanti tree, we have the Fanti, we have the Kapim tree. And all that. So when you hear someone speaking tree, you know that this person or uh, and other uh, uh, features, you can say that this person is an Akan. Okay? And what do you think is their food? With their food, uh, I know Ashantis to like, uh, uh, is it Ampersier? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> fufu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. and other related uh, foods are uh, bitter and uh, those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is it with the Akans or mm -hmm. the Asantis. Mm -hmm. When you come to with the Evis, mm -hmm. we have our language. Okay. The Anglo, the Aveno, the Tong, the Vedome. Languages there. So when you hear anyone speaking these languages, you can tell that this person is from this tribe. Mm -hmm. With their dance, mm -hmm. we have the Agbaja, mm -hmm. we have the Yefe, we have the Busu, the Trippi, and all that. Can you dance all for us? <laughs> Since you are teaching us, so for, for us to know that so you are not just bragging, making mouth mouth. Oh, no, me, I can dance Agbaja if you give me the beat. 
Okay. I will demonstrate it right now. The amount of beating I want to mean here. Ah! Bado, bado, sorry. My dear, 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 d
and the culture be no so I hear true no, you're flying away. I wish I and Kebab Wire no, a Fabra and more dear, the my benefit, the my respect, evidence, a profit, the benefit, a woo woman, you know, for bad advice, na for my good. Um, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. Mm. I would first of all have to say that uh, the first thing we have to go back for is our way of dressing, our dress code is very important. If we are known for our dress code, let's start going back for that. Let's start training our children, our colleagues. Let's start advising the people for dre uh, for, uh, to dress decently. And also, our dances. Let us not feel shy of speaking our language whenever we find ourselves. There are some people from my tribe they come to stay in Accra, they come home, and then you speak of it to them, they will tell you Minty. Ta? Oh, yes. Yes. Ah. How? The person has not forgotten. Um, the person, person wants to prove to you that... Of he, uh, exactly. So, sometimes too, they come here and come home, and you see their relation with others is very... Something. Hey, and then you sit and laugh. This is the because or <laughs> because I say, and I hear do cow cow. I'm so do live on cow cow. And cock or sing cow cow. Now, where do you have any So the person will tell you, Minty. And you see this same person speaking away in the few a few minutes to. You are sitting home. So, so, so we are, we are, we are pretending we are hiding our identity. We are ashamed of our identity. Oh, and here is you. As Africans. If we begin to do that, what shows that we will go outside Africa and make African proud or project the good name of Africa? We will not be able to do that. Even within Ghana, we are doing this. What if you leave Ghana to the outside world, to the Western countries? That one, when you come back, I don't think even uh, 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 a Ghanaian will shake you. Or you would like to even hug your, call, your, your fellow African. So I believe that it is time we take our language serious. Nowadays, when you see someone who is not fluent in English and using his local language to respond to issues, people refer to the person as illiterate. They begin to laugh at the person. Mm. Forgetting that that is what identifies us. So if we want to project that image, that identity, let's make use of our local languages as well. In our schools, you ask a question, the student will not be able to flourish in English, and then you whip the student. It is good you impact that education in the person, but not to an extent where you make the person to forget or look at its language to be inferior. Exactly. Exactly. So, so these are the things that sometimes even it is advisable when you go to the classroom to teach as a teacher, if you can teach your students in the local language to understand the concept you are teaching, do it. Because at the end of the day, these people you are teaching will be resourceful to the country one day. Why should we be shy of our own language? Some, the English is a borrowed language. It's a foreign language. Why should we be imposing it always? I believe it is an official language, yes, and it needs to be used at a workplace where maybe someone... Or oh, as I'm sitting here, I do not understand tree. Mm, Flute, I'm not good at tree. So we yeah, use it okay. as a common language. But when we meet as people yeah, who you. can really uh, demonstrate and make use of our language, uh -huh. let's do it. You see, let's do it. So that we, 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 we tell the people outside Africa that, yes, these are Africans. This is what we stand for. Once again, uh, I would advise that we don't give up on our informal education that we receive from home. Things that we learn from our parents unconsciously, especially the skills. 
Let's not neglect the skills we have acquired from farming. Mm. Let's not forget the skills we have acquired from our fathers who are carpenters. Let us not underrate the skills we have acquired from our fathers who are blacksmiths and all that. Because these are practical skills that the whites are making use of and we are subjecting ourselves to. So when we begin to develop these skills, go back for these skills, make use of them, transform our institutions to, 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 to introduce practical skills, we will see ourselves growing as, as African. We will see, we will be able to restore that identity we are losing. Mm. So these are the few things I have for uh, everyone and Africans out there listening to me, mm. and specifically we the Ghanaians. Yes. Uh, we would have to make use of this and then get our culture moving rich in the Yo, Thank you so much for coming. Any social media handles? The, uh, Sylvia Dogbe on Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I use the Facebook most. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate your presence on this platform. Yo, Abusia, Entino, Monkeka, Kabenkuno, Ushia Gane, Niwa Bruchida, Nesembo Bosso. Santini on country, Kuran, as the mature Mudi Abrofun Pomons, Lessa, or Slats Rona, Gana for no Muni or Muni and Macosia or Muni Pepani, the Yumbu, or Musomi and Nipapo, or Beni or Bikuno, a cat and the old Nipepan, I say. Share, Charlie, let's love, love and hate it. Why? Baby, anyhow, or die, be die, that we are singing in any.